Welcome back, everybody, to, uh, Phasmophobia. So, <laughs> so in my last Phasmophobia tutorial, um, some people were having problems and confusion, uh, about, uh, some issues that they were finding. Some people were saying the map doesn't load. Other people were saying that, uh, they couldn't get the texture pack to work. And so today, I'm gonna cover... The entire installation process, step by step, uh, so it will work for pretty much everything. So, the first thing that you want to do is you want to head over to this website right here. NeoMCCreations.com slash map slash phasmophobia. There will be a link in the description. And you can scroll through this. You can read through this. Uh, you want to read through this. So in today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how to set it up using the Feather Client. Uh, it should work pretty much the same for any server type. Uh, in my prior tutorial, I showed you how to set it up on uh, just single player. So hopefully, uh, you will be able to do it just fine. Uh, and that's another thing you want to do is you want to type in Feather client in your web browser and it should be this one feathermc.com and it'll bring up this website and you want to click download for windows and it, uh, you want to save it wherever and then once it's done once it's done you would double click it and run it and it'll say it'll come up and say a prompt uh, it'll show an administrator prompt uh, double click on it Uh, of course, I already have it, so I don't need to do this, but uh, you would double-click on it, and then a prompt would come up, and you'd click yes. Um, you see this prompt right here? I don't know if you can see it, but uh, you would want to click yes. Uh, I don't think you could see that, because it broke OBS, but anyway. Um, so, once you install it... Don't worry about this it's just cookie clicker stuff uh, once you install it um you should have a feather launcher i don't have it on my desktop but once you uh download it and install it you should see this uh if it gets stuck on something uh just hold alt and press f4 and then relaunch it uh, sometimes you have to do that all right and then the, uh now what you want to do is you want to click servers you want to click add server and you can just name it whatever actually i'm gonna name it test tutorial all right and then you would give it a host name tutorial mc server okay and you want to click custom uh and then set your slots to eight and your RAM to whatever, I'm just gonna set it to 8,000. And uh, then what you want to do is you wanna go back over to your internet browser and you want to uh, come over here and you wanna scroll down past all of this. We'll get to these settings later. You wanna scroll down past all of this to this download button. You wanna click on it. Uh, sometimes it doesn't work, but uh, so clicking on the edge doesn't work sometimes. What you have to do is you have to click directly in the center. But then what you want to do is you want to click on this guy, this bottom one. It should be the bottom one anyway. And you want to right click it and you want to click download. And it will scan it for viruses. Uh, don't worry, there are no viruses on this. I've tested it. If you want to, you can open up the website. And you can run it through there and it should come up empty. Okay, and once this is done downloading, if it would work, there it is. Once it's done downloading, uh, that one's pretty much good. You want to go back to this website and you want to click resource pack required. And you want to pick whichever one uh, that you want to do. Uh, so the streamer safe one has. Um, basically remove the DMCA songs but the 
the uh, regular one still has the DMCA song. So that's why this one says streamer safe. Now I'm gonna get the streamer safe one because uh, I like making YouTube videos and I don't wanna get taken down. And it says, can't scan for viruses. Again, you wanna just click download anyway. There are no viruses, it is fine. All right, and once that's done, you can close out of that. And now what you want to do is you want to head over to optifine.net slash downloads and you'll see this button right here show all versions you want to click it and you want to scroll down to 1.16.5 and don't click this download button click the mirror button next to it that'll skip any ads and then you want to click download click save and yes this is an ad yes i'm using the same browser that it's getting that i'm getting an ad for uh but yeah, you would just wait for that to be done, and then once that's done, you will go over to your downloads folder, and you should have all three of these things. Now what you need to do with these things is you need to go to your Feather client, and instead of selecting a world, it, this will bring up, this will bring up a, um, uh, from your dot minecraft folder it'll bring up your saves folder you don't want to uh bring it in through there because uh if you screwed around with something on there and it doesn't work it'll bring it'll copy that same folder over to the server and the server won't start correctly so what you want to do instead is you just want to uh, you have everything set up correctly you want to click create server it's probably going to say Oh, never mind. Okay. Now what you want to do is you want to click this gear icon and you want to click open folder. And it'll bring up the server folder. Now, it's going to be empty. The reason it's going to be empty is because you have to go get the server.jar. So you want to open up your Minecraft launcher. And you just want to wait for it to load. Alright, and once it loads, you want to head over to installations. If you don't have a 1.16.5 installation, you click new installation. You click right here and you type in 1.16.5. Not the Optifine one, you want the regular release.1.16.5. And then you want to click server, this button right here, and it will download the server drive. Uh, and you can also... Uh, just cancel out of this because you will need off the fine. Okay, so now what you want to do is you want to go back over to your downloads and you want to bring the server jar into this folder right here. Um, and then it will uh, basically use this server jar instead of making a new one and downloading it. So then what you want to do is you want to go back to your downloads and you want to uh, take this guy and you want to put it in here. You're going to double click it and it's going to have another folder in it. And this folder is the folder you want to put in here. So, so basically the way that the Windows extraction system works is it extracts it to a new folder. So if I was to extract it to a new folder, it's going to take a bit of time. But if I was to extract it to a new folder, what people do is they extract it to a new folder, they rename this to world, and they leave it like that. But this won't work because this has a folder in it with all the world stuff in it. So what you have to do is once you extract it to that folder, you have to go in that folder, grab this, and move it back a folder. And then you can name this, or, uh, this folder world, and it will work correctly. And once you do that, uh, what you want to do is you want to uh, go back to the Feather client and you want to click start server on the new server that you just created. And it will run through and create everything. And this is going to take a bit of time when it first starts because it's downloading all the necessary stuff. Okay, and we're back. So once it says this done, uh, and then the seconds that it took, and then this, once it says this message, you want to immediately turn the server off. 
and it will save and you want to go back to the server folder and a bunch of new things will pop up the only thing you really want to screw around with is the server.properties so we're going to double click it and it's going to open for me it's going to open in visual studio code because that's what i have to set for it to do but uh most of people have it set to open with notepad so we're going to just select notepad real quick okay and this is uh this is your server.properties folder so the first thing you want to do is you want to look for the game mode and you want to set it to adventure you want to set game mode to adventure because uh, if you set it to survival, you'll be able to break doors and uh, it, the game will be able to place a back and will break. The next thing you want to do is you want to find enable command block and you want to set it to true. Not true, true. And you just set your message of the day. That's what MOTD is. I'm just going to set it to tutorial. And you want to set PVP to false. If I could spell correctly, false. And that's all you need to change. Now come up to file, click save, and you can close out of it. And now you can go back and restart the server. Okay, so the server is now back up and running. Uh, you can minimize out of that. We don't need that anymore. You can um, minimize out of your browser if you have it open. But now what? Now what do you do? So you go back to your downloads. And what you want to do is you want to double click this Optifine folder. And it'll tell you what to open it with. If it doesn't tell, if it doesn't come up and say Java platform SE binary. If it doesn't come up with that, this window won't pop up with whatever you open it with. So say you opened it with... Uh, Try to open it with OpenJDK and that didn't work, and or WinRAR Archiver and that doesn't work. Uh, if you open it with Java, this is the only app that will cause this to pop up. But if you don't have it, you'll have to install Java. So what you want to do is you want to go back to your browser and you want to type in Oracle or Java Oracle, and then you want to click on this one that says Java.com. And you want to click on, oh, whoops, I think it's this link, oracle.com slash java. Yeah, it is. So you want to click oracle.com slash java, and it'll bring you up with this web page. And you want to click on access, oh, that's assess the health. You want to scroll down until you find Java SE, and you want to click download Java now, and it'll bring you to this page. Or uh, you can just click on the link in the description that says oracle.com slash whatever, 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 and it'll bring you to this page. And what you immediately want to do is you want to click, you want to scroll down, you want to click Windows, and you want to click the 64-bit installer. And you're going to save that. Now, I already have Java installed, but basically once it's done, you will double click it, you'll run through everything, and you will... Um, once it's done, you will shut your computer down, re uh, restart it, and then this Optifine file should work when you double click on it, and this window should pop up. What you want to do is you want to click install. Now I already have it, but I'm going to click install anyway. And it's going to say Optifine is, is successfully installed. I'll click OK. And now you don't need either of these. You can get rid of these. So, now what? Well, what you would do is you would open back up your micro launcher, but if it's been open, you want to close it and relaunch it. Okay, so you've reopened your launcher, and it should come up and say this: Optifine 1.16.5 Optifine underscore HD whatever, and it should have this icon on it. And if you click play, it'll come up and say this: You click I understand the risks. Don't warn me again about this installation, and click play. And then you wait for Minecraft to do its thing, download some stuff, and it will load up 1.16.5 Optifine. Okay, so Minecraft just opened, and it's going to bring up this loading bar, and we're going to wait for it to finish doing its things that it needs to do. 
Okay, and here it is. Now I'm gonna full... I guess I can't full screen it. We're going to uh, maximize it. And you're gonna come in here and you're going to see... Uh, most likely you're not gonna see anything because you haven't installed the resource pack yet. What you wanna do is you wanna click open resource pack folder. And then you want to go back to your downloads and you wanna take this folder and put it in your downloads. Now I already have it, so I'm gonna skip it. Uh, but you would move it in there. And then we're just gonna pretend that it moved it by deleting it. And then you would go back to Minecraft and this resource pack would pop up. You wanna click the arrow next to it and then click done and it will reload it. I already have it loaded, so it won't load for me. But the now you're probably wondering, well, how do I connect to my uh, to the server? How do I play this? So what you want to do is, if you're hosting the server, uh, what you can do is you can click uh, Direct Connect, and you can just type in zero and click Join Server. And keep in mind the server has to be on for this to work. Um, but if you're hosting it, you can just type in zero and it'll bring up this. Now I have shaders on right now, but you probably don't have shaders, so I'm going to turn those off. Okay, so this is what it looks like when you first load in, but don't touch anything yet. What you want to do is you want to go back to your server and you want to op yourself. So you want to OP and then your username. Mine's iHunt. So now it says made iHunt a server operator. And this is because if you're not a server operator, uh, these books will just have a bunch of gibberish and code and stuff in them. And as you can see here, it says uh, due to an MC bug, you must op all the players or the books won't load. That is the exact reason. But now you're in your server. But... You want your friends to join the server. So how are they supposed to join? Well, you know when you typed in the uh, IP, that's what this is. That's what this IP is right here. And you can click this button, and it will copy it for you. Isn't that cool? It'll copy it to your clipboard. And now what you can do is you can send it to your friends on either Discord, or you can send it to your friends through text, SMS, or whatever you use. and what they'll do is they'll click add server, they'll click on this, and they'll just paste it in. They'll hold control and press V, and it will paste it in. And then they can name the server whatever. I'm just going to call it tutorial. And you click done. And here it is, tutorial. There's the message of the day, tutorial. And it says zero out of eight players because nobody's on it. But more importantly, it says eight players, which is the maximum limit of players that should be able to join this world. But yeah, that's how you uh, that's how you get phasmophobia to work inside of Minecraft. And uh, I'm just gonna play a quick game real quick. Uh, we're gonna go Tanglewood Amateur. And on my on my other server, I have all the items, but on this one, I don't. But uh, you can click on you can right click on the settings, and you can see experimental items and ghosts. If you turn on both of those and click this button twice, you can see all the experimental items. And once you go in the game by readying up and then starting. Floors? Yes. Floors. Um, so once you load in, it'll have some splash text that says the map you're playing on. And then the map type. So this is Tanglewood Street House, and then this flavor text will come up. Well, not text. Welcome to Tanglewood. While this neighborhood may seem quiet, reports of violent supernatural encounters have been frequent. Stay vigilant and keep on your toes. Okay, so that was the flavor uh, text that I was talking about. But uh, now what you want to do is uh, basically you want to immediately open up your guidebook and just read through the whole thing in introduction introduction continued goals sanity setup time power power continued activity activity continued 
Passive actions, aggressive actions, items, ghosts, objectives. And if you go to your ghosts book, you can actually see the ghosts that are in the game. And you can go to the next page and there will be experimental ghosts that you uh, enabled. You either enabled or you have disabled. And then you have the items that goes over how each item works. A math reader, for example. Uh, and then you have your je uh, objectives book. Discover what kind of ghost you're dealing with is always the first one that will never be different. Uh, find evidence of the paranormal paranormal using an emf reader uh finish the investigation without any players dying and then the fourth one which i don't recommend doing if you're very first starting out uh will also be different in my case it's leave the power off in the property for 50 percent or more of the round uh sometimes it can be get emf four or higher during the hunt and this objective is pretty hard to get because you have to be on top of the ghost when it starts hunting to get that objective but now what we're going to do is we're going to go into the house and we're going to find the ghost. We're going to determine the ghost type and we're going to conclude this video. And uh, the thermometer works uh, like a thermometer does. Uh, every four seconds it updates and shows the room temperature. Uh, sometimes the thermometer will freeze if you get to a freezing room. Say, like, they're on a big map, and the last room you check happens to be the ghost room, and it's gotten freezing. Most of the time, the thermometer itself will look like it stopped working. But all you need to do is right-click, turn it off, and do it again, and it will turn back on. And it will start working. Uh, but the thermometer is what I use to find the ghost mo uh, 100% of the time. Sometimes I use the EMF, but uh, not a lot. Most likely, no. Uh, it says 10 degrees Celsius, and it's below 10, so what you can do is you can go to your items, and you can type in, well, you can click thermometer. And you can go to the next page, and it says rooms, bet uh, room between 0 and 10 is the ghost room, so this is the ghost room right here. And I like to bring a camera as a second item for orbs, so we're going to place that in the corner where you can see everything. Uh, and you're probably wondering what happens if you enter the house without a flashlight. Uh, you get blindness, and you cannot see more than a few blocks in front of you. Oh, and I just remembered we have to set up all the settings. Now, uh, the main reason that you need Optifine to play the pack, and uh, to play this, is because the pack won't work, uh, the items won't look correct. But the secondary reason is because Optifine has this neat little feature called uh, dynamic lights. Now, if this was off and you scrolled to your flashlight, you would not get this uh, light effect around you. It would just be dark still. So you want to set that to fancy. Another thing you want to do is you want to set graphics to fancy if you can, if you have a good PC. Play with at least 10 chunks. And then... You want to go into the quality, and wait, is it in quality? No, I believe it's under details. Yes, it is, details. So what you want to do is you want to go under details and set clouds to off. I have it on default because I do not mind the clouds. But if you have a big map that's up high in the Minecraft world, clouds will start clipping through the map and it won't seem realistic, which is why they ask you to turn it off. Okay, so the next thing we're going to bring in are the ghostwriting books. Uh, the ghostwriting book is useful for evidence, obviously. Um, the ghost can write in it uh, numerous different uh, texts. And uh, if you added items, secondary items and experimental items, they would be there. You can use the camera by right-clicking this button, and it will put you into the camera. And... Uh, you can view orbs, uh, ghost orbs from the cameras, but no other equipment. And, um, there's a little trick that I like to do to see there's orbs in the hallway. They like to spawn there. Uh, but a little trick that I like to do to, uh, see orbs if they're behind me is, uh, press my F5 button. 
and you can see orbs behind you if they're there. And you want to sneak crouch to move on to the next camera, but if you don't have another camera, it will just uh, kick you out of the current camera. Um, but now what we're going to do is we're going to go back into the house, and we're going to check for uh, fingerprints. But I'm going to lay down the ghost riding book first. Now, if you've played the actual game, you'll know how painful it is to get ghost riding. So what you can do is you can place it there. And it's actually freezing. So, evidence book. Right click on it. These plus buttons uh, are the buttons you click for evidence. So, because it's freezing, you click the plus next to it. I'm going to say uh, player name, scribble down, freezing temperatures, or whatever you selected. And you can actually uh, remove these too, which is cool. Uh, so just in case you click something wrong. But if you didn't notice, uh, or if you did notice, there are fingerprints on this door. Now, funnily enough, this door I don't think is movable by the ghost. But this door is over here, and it also has fingerprints. So you would want to put that in your ghost writing book. Oh, another thing. The evidence book is global, so whatever you put in... Oh, fuck. How is the ghost hunting right now? How is it ghost hunting right now? Scared the crap out of me. I'm gonna go into spectator mode because I can. Oh yeah, uh, new update. Ghosts are incredibly fast. So yeah, good luck with that. Um... Yeah, but it's fingerprints. Uh, anyway, as I was saying before, I was rudely interrupted by the ghost. Uh, the evidence book is global, so whatever you put in it, other players will see. Uh, and they can also, uh, remove whatever you put in it. So, kind of a bit of a troll there. A trolling problem there, but that's fine. Um, I th you know what this ghost is? It's a yokai. Now... How do I know it's a yokai? I'm not going to go deep diving into uh, ghost behaviors, but the yokai preys on people that have higher sanity rather than lower sanity. It says so in the ghost book. Uh, see strength. Having a higher sanity makes it more active. Having a lower sanity makes it less active, 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 but it can also only hunt the most sane player in the house. Uh, so it is a yokai. And that's another thing you can do if you don't know the evidence of the ghost, but you know the, um, if you know the, uh, behavior of the ghost, you can go into the book and it will tell you. So, in my case, it's ghost orbs, phrasing temps, but I got them all, I just forgot to put it down. So it's a yokai, let's get out of here, I can't do all the objectives because I don't have any objective items. Um, I you but you'll come back and you'll get some experience and your money. If you press tab or whatever, it brings up the player list. You'll see your level next to your player. Uh, and you will also get money for completing contracts. I got $30 from doing that one contract. And you can buy items. Some are incredibly expensive, such as a voodoo doll. But they come with a great, um, a great value, uh, valueness. Whatever. I, my brain had a stroke. But, uh, the voodoo doll can basically stop a hunt if the ghost runs into it. Which is why it's so expensive, because it's so overpowered. Uh, but yeah, that's how to play, uh, Minecraft Phasmophobia. And how to set it up on a server. Specifically, Feather server, uh, Feather Client. But, uh, it's basically the same premise for all other servers. Um, and you would just do that. But, uh, yeah, I thank you guys for watching this video. If you did enjoy, you can like and subscribe. And, uh, don't forget to turn the notification bell on. It helps me out a ton. Uh, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.